I'm Dr. Jim Baker. I'm the director of the Mary H. Weiser Food Allergy Center. We felt that this year back to school would be particularly difficult for our food allergy families, given the disruption from the COVID pandemic. So we decided to create a video that would help you with back to school and help your schools prepare for this. We have created this video for you to get a quick but comprehensive evidence-based introduction to the various aspects of food allergy and return to school. This video is not a replacement for medical advice, and for any specific questions related to your child's allergy, please contact your doctor. Now more than ever, families with food allergies need support and a well-formed plan before going back to school. You can watch this video all the way through for a more comprehensive review, or skip to a specific section for a quick refresher. Recognizing signs of food allergy is an important part of management. Resources such as the Food Allergy Action Plan, which your physician can provide, can help you recognize a food allergy reaction and guide you on what to do. Review this resource with family, teachers, babysitters, friends, and your child so that everyone is familiar with how to recognize a food allergy reaction. Signs of food allergy are divided into mild symptoms, such as itchy mouth or a few hives, and severe symptoms, such as repeated vomiting, shortness of breath, wheezing, or throat closing. Most symptoms occur within an hour of eating a food allergy, and many times symptoms can occur immediately. When a food allergy reaction happens, do not panic. For one mild symptom, such as hives around the mouth, give an antihistamine like cetirizine, which is also known as Zyrtec, or diphenhydramine, also known as Benadryl. Do this as soon as possible and watch closely. For mild symptoms or two or more body symptoms, such as nausea and itchy throat, or for any severe symptoms like wheezing or throat closing, this may be anaphylaxis. Give epinephrine immediately. If a mild symptom worsens even after taking an antihistamine, give epinephrine immediately. If you are ever unsure about whether or not to use epinephrine, use epinephrine. The longer you wait, the harder it may be to stop a reaction. Do not rely on antihistamines or inhalers to treat anaphylaxis. In addition, make sure epinephrine autoinjectors are not expired and stored at room temperature to maintain their maximum effectiveness. Avoid exposing them to extreme temperatures and do not leave them in the car or put them in the refrigerator. Always have two epinephrine autoinjectors available with you. Some reactions may need more than one dose of epinephrine to treat. Next, we will show you how to use some of the most common models of epinephrine autoinjectors, EpiPen, AviQ, and AdrenaClick. Please be aware that our video does not cover all of the available models of epinephrine. Hold the EpiPen like a microphone. Do not place your thumb over either end of the EpiPen. Keep the blue safety cap side away from the body. Remember, blue to the sky, orange to the thigh. Remove the blue safety cap. Press hard to inject the EpiPen into the muscle of the outer thigh and hold for three seconds. It will make a very loud click. Remove the EpiPen and discard safely. It cannot be used anymore. Rub the injection site and lay down to help the medicine spread throughout the body. You should expect to feel your heart race and for symptoms to improve within a few seconds. Call 911. If symptoms return or do not improve within five minutes, inject your second EpiPen immediately. Remove the AviQ from the outer case. The audio instructions will start. Remove the red safety cap. Press hard to inject the AviQ into the muscle of the outer thigh and hold for three seconds. It will make a very loud click. Remove the AviQ and discard safely. It cannot be used anymore. Rub the injection site and lay down to help the medicine spread throughout the body. You should expect to feel your heart race and for symptoms to improve within a few seconds. Call 911. If symptoms return or do not improve within five minutes, inject your second AviQ immediately.
Hold the Adrena click like a microphone. Avoid putting your thumb over either end. Remove the safety caps from both ends. Place the red end of the Adrena click at a 90 degree angle perpendicular to the outer thigh muscle. Press hard to inject the Adrena click into the muscle of the outer thigh and hold for 10 seconds. It will make a loud click. Remove the Adrena click and discard safely. It cannot be used anymore. Rub the injection site and lay down to help the medicine spread throughout the body. You should expect to feel your heart race and for symptoms to improve within a few seconds. Call 911. If symptoms return or do not improve within five minutes, inject your second Adrena click immediately. Avoiding foods that may cause a reaction is very important in preventing food allergy reactions. Understanding how to read food labels is key to avoiding problem foods. Read every food label every time to decide whether a food is safe. All pre-packed foods in the United States are required to list if they contain one of the major food allergens. Milk, egg, wheat, fish, peanut, tree nuts, soy, and crustacean shellfish, such as shrimp, lobster, or crab. Sesame will soon be added to this list. Other foods may not be listed in the same way that the top eight allergens are. Look for these foods in the ingredients section. There is another section of food labeling called the precautionary allergen label section. This includes phrases such as may contain or processed in the same facility with, etc. This indicates that the food may have come into contact with an allergy food, even though the allergen is not an intended ingredient in that food. These labels are placed on foods at the discretion of the manufacturer and are not mandated by the FDA. Simply stated, it is not required that food companies use such labels. When in doubt, do not eat the food. Working with a nutritionist can be helpful in better understanding food labels knowing what are good substitutes to the foods that can't be eaten, and creating safe meal plans. Companies can change labels, so it is important to read the label every time you buy it. Safely living with food allergies is a team effort. It is important to communicate with schools to keep a positive and safe environment for your child. Communication equals education. Before going back to school, please review these essential steps. Speak with your child's allergist and healthcare team to discuss a plan for going back to school that is appropriate for your child's age. Get an updated copy of the Food Allergy Action Plan for both your home and school. Also, update your epinephrine and histamine supply. The Food Allergy Action Plan and medications will need to be turned into the school at the start of the school year. Speak with school nurses, school representatives to come up with a plan in case an adverse food reaction happens at school. Contact your school food director to discuss dining accommodation options for your child. Reach out to your child's teacher to talk about how to accommodate your child's food allergies in the classroom. It may be helpful to prepare a special snack box for your child to take to school. For college students, reaching out to dining services, housing services, and create an emergency response plan for your dorm room, dining hall, as well as other areas of campus. Last but not least, Make it a habit for your child to communicate about their food allergies on their own behalf and develop age-appropriate food allergy management skills. For older children, place food allergies into the medical ID section of cell phones so in the case of an emergency, a first responder can get the information from the phone. It is also a good idea to wear medical alert jewelry such as a necklace or bracelet. Due to COVID, hand sanitizer use has become very popular but hand sanitizer does not effectively remove allergens from services. Make sure your child has access to wipes or a place for hand washing with soap and water in case they come into contact with food allergens during the school day. If your school requires students to wear masks, create a plan with your child's teacher about how to recognize quickly signs of a food allergy. This may require your child to remove their mask to look for signs such as lip swelling or hives around the mouth. A food allergy can bring many changes to a family's everyday life. It's normal to be overwhelmed or anxious. If you're not sure where to start, many allergy clinics offer or can refer you to counseling. Food allergy counseling can guide patients through food allergy appointments, testing, and treatments. 
We can address fears that are a barrier to skin prick tests, blood draws, oral food challenges, and oral immunotherapy. We can help families develop coping strategies and tools to navigate food allergy management. Cognitive behavioral therapy helps identify and reframe negative and inaccurate thoughts to reframe them to positive, accurate thoughts. We can create a game plan for patients and their families throughout different stages of life to move from infancy to college and beyond. There are new treatments for food allergy that are currently being explored. One such approach is oral immunotherapy, or OIT for short. This process involves building the body's tolerance to a food a person is allergic to. The goal of this treatment is to prevent a life-threatening allergic reaction in case the food was accidentally eaten. OIT must only be done under the supervision of an allergist. There are other approaches that are currently under research. These include immunotherapy in other forms, such as patches on the skin or tablets under the tongue. There are also vaccines being developed for food allergy treatment. If you are interested in exploring new treatment options, please talk to your allergist. In this video, we went over the signs and symptoms of food allergy and anaphylaxis, what to do during a reaction, as well as different aspects of living with food allergies. We hope you found this video helpful. This video is not medical advice. For any specific questions regarding your allergies or your child's allergies, please contact your allergist. More food allergy education resources are listed below. Thank you.